Welcome folks. Discussion today of types of solution sets. Uh, I'll point out this quote by Don Knuth that our author includes in, in the textbook in this section. I, I really love this quote. Um, Don Knuth is uh, a, a very well-respected computer scientist and mathematician at Stanford. Um, he's the inventor of the typesetting language tech that um, I've mentioned in class, and, and um, you, can, you can check out some, some tech templates on our Canvas website. In any case, um, Don Knuth said that science is what we understand well enough to explain to a computer, and, and art is everything else. And I, I really like this, this quote, um, particularly as it pertains to this section, because in this section we're very methodical in determining when a linear system has a set of solutions and when that, uh, when that um, solution is unique. So we'll see how that um, shakes out from the reduced row echelon form last time. So we'll start off with a discussion of consistent systems and then talk about, um, talk about free variables and such systems. So we say that, that uh, a linear system is consistent if it has at least one solution. Um, otherwise, the system is said to be inconsistent. Okay, so again here, um, a pretty straightforward definition. A system is consistent or it's not, right? So it's consistent if it has at least one solution and, and if it has no solutions, then we say it's inconsistent. So we'll categorize um, this concept of, of consistent and inconsistent with this partition of, of column indices that we talked about before. Um, categorization will depend on um, the number of pivot columns R and then comparing the indices of the pivot columns to the indices of the non-pivot columns. Um, so, so here's an example of a matrix that's in reduced row echelon form. So in particular here we see that our matrix has four pivots, and we can see what the partition of column indices are. D, D represents the pivot columns, columns one, three, four, and seven. Okay, so again with those four pivot columns, columns one, three, four, and seven, we see that the partition of column indices represented by the matrix D, sorry, by the set D that stands for the pivot columns is, is the set one, three, four, seven. So I'll give you a chance to play with that a little bit um, on, on our worksheet. Similarly, on the matrix, um, on, on, the, on the system associated with arc type I, we see that there are four equations n equals four equations and n equals seven variables. We would expect then the augmented matrix to be four by eight, seven plus one, four by eight. So again, with the matrix of coefficients being four by seven and the vector of constants having four elements, we expect the augmented matrix to be four by eight. Okay, and that augmented matrix is, is sort of clunky, here it is, but we know that each um, each matrix has a reduced row echelon form, and, and we can see here that the reduced row echelon form of this augmented matrix has R equals three pivots. Okay, again, those three pivots are columns one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three, four. And, and the associated um, partition of column indices gives us F equals the remaining columns, right, two, five, six, seven, and then of course the column associated with um, the augmented column, eight. So as it turns out, with regard to our original system of linear equations, the D columns represent dependent variables, and the F columns, well, except for that, except for that augmented column, of course, represent the free variables. So if, for this system, we were going to write down the system of linear equations represented by the reduced row echelon form, it, it would look like this. So, so in this example, again, if we were following our strategy from before, 
our free variables would be the variables corresponding to the non-pivot columns from the coefficient matrix, and our dependent variables would be the variables corresponding to the pivot columns from our augmented matrix. Okay, with that being said, we can um, express the set of solutions, and, and again, it's a little bit messy here, but we can see that um, x2, x5, x6, and x7 are free, and, and write our other variables x1, x3, and x4 in terms of those variables x2, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so here again, x2, x5, x6, and x7 are our free variables, and x1, x3, and x4 are our dependent variables. Those again are related directly to this partition of column indices from the reduced row echelon form of our coefficient matrix, augmented matrix. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, and define, this, um, define this carefully here. If A is the augmented matrix of a consistent system of linear equations and, and B is the row equivalent matrix in reduced row echelon form, then every pivot column corresponds to a variable that's dependent. A variable that's not dependent is free variable, right? So, so sort of the preview here, um, and, and maybe you'll pause the video for a second and think about this. What happens to an augmented matrix? Again, remember that this augmented matrix has n plus one columns, right? If when we reduce it to reduce row echelon form, that last column is a pivot column. Okay, and, and actually I'll give you a little hint here. We've, we've seen this before um, in the case where we had a, um, the last column that was a, a pivot column. Um, we saw that there was sort of a nonsense equation associated with that, that row, um, an equation of the form 0 equals 1, indicating no solution. And, and that's going to be what happens here as well. Um, th when, when that last column is a pivot column, it turns out that our, our system of equations has no solution. Um, so again, here, here's an example um, of... Uh, a, a linear system of equations, um, m equals five equations, and m equals five unknowns. Um, and we can identify those, those characteristics of the reduced row echelon form, r, the number of pivot columns, d, the partition of those pivot columns to indicate dependent variables, and f, the free variables. Okay, so here's that partition of column indices. D, the pivot columns are one, three, and four, indicating that the dependent variables are x1, x3, and x4. F equals two, five, and six. Of course, six is the augmented column, right? So the free variables are x2 and x5. We can go ahead and express the set of solutions then in terms of those free variables x2 and x5 as x1 equals 6 plus x2 minus 3x5, x2 is free, x3 is 1 plus 2x5, x4 is 9 minus 4x5, and again x5 is a free variable. Okay, so, so that um, reduced row echelon form identifying the pivot columns and non-pivot columns leads to the dependent and free variables, which leads quickly to an efficient representation of the set of solutions. Okay, as you might imagine, um, things are problematic if, if the last column is, um, is a pivot column and, and there's a theorem about that, right? So if A is an augmented matrix of a system of linear equations with n variables and B is a row equivalent matrix, then um, the system is inconsistent if and only if the last column is a pivot column. Okay, so this is our, our first sort of experience with what's called an if and only if theorem. So I'd like to go ahead and make a couple comments on this idea of, of if and only if. Um, this symbol with the left and right arrows is the symbol for if and only if. Um, statements of, of the flavor if and only if always arrive in the form.
P is true if and only if Q is true. Okay, so again here, um, the form P is true if and only if Q is true. Um, the truth of P implies the truth of Q, and similarly, the truth of Q implies the truth of P. So in order to prove such a statement, what we do is assume that P is true and prove that Q is true. And then we'll assume that Q is true and prove that P is true. Okay, and in this particular case, the statement P is that the system of equations is inconsistent, right? We know inconsistent means it doesn't have a solution. And the statement Q is column N plus one is a pivot column. So let's go ahead and, and sort of walk through this proof. Um, we'll start off going from right to left, I guess, with our arrow direction here, assuming Q and proving P. Okay, in this case, the reduced row echelon form of the augmented matrix representing the linear system of equations will have some row that has N zeros and the N plus first entry is a one, right? Column N plus one is a pivot column. Now you have to imagine what the corresponding equation would look like that corresponds to this row. The corresponding equation would be 0x1 plus 0x2 all the way out to 0xn equals 1. Of course, this is the nonsense equation that we saw before. We know that no numbers can satisfy this equation, so the system has no solution. Right, and of course, systems with no solutions are inconsistent. Let's go ahead and, and, and look at the other direction, right? We've shown that truth of Q implies truth of P. So let's go ahead and show that truth of P implies truth of Q. And, and we do this in sort of a special way, and I'll go ahead and refer you back to our proof section in the book. We do this by using the contrapositive. Okay, so again, um, we'll prove that P implies Q by proving that not Q implies not P. Um, go ahead and check out the, the section on proof techniques from the book um, on contrapositive to, to see how this is true. But the statement not Q in this case is the statement column M plus one is not a pivot. And the statement not P is that the system is not inconsistent or that the system is consistent. So we'll go ahead and assume that column M plus one is not a pivot and prove that the system therefore is consistent. If we assume that column M plus one is not a pivot, we know that there are R pivots. We can partition our dependent variables, our column indices into those dependent variables, XD1 to XDR. We can partition um, the non-pivot columns into uh, corresponding to our free variables, F1 to F n minus R. Let's go ahead and set all of those free variables equal to zero. And then all we have to do, again, referring back to B, our original matrix, is set XD1 out to XDR equal to the element in the first through rth row of B in the n plus first column. That is a solution. Okay, if we have a solution, the system is consistent. Okay, so here's, here's the take home message. The take home message is that this theorem allows us to recognize whether uh, an augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form represents a consistent system. If the last column is a pivot column, no solution. If the last column is not a pivot column, consistent, right, at least a solution. So I'll let you go ahead and, and play around with, um, with the worksheet here that illustrates um, consistent system and, and not a consistent system um, just by, by kind of checking out um, a modification of the reduced row echelon form in order to do that. Okay, this theorem um, is, is um, sort of a, a, a summary of the previous theorem, right? Um, if the number of rows is less than or equal to n um, in a consistent system, if, if 
the, the number of pivots is equal, then the system has a unique solution. And, and if there are more variables and pivots, then there are free variables, so there are infinitely many solutions. So this is a theorem for consistent systems. OK, so the proof here begins with the observation that um, the augmented matrix representing a system of, li of linear equations with, um, with n variables has n plus 1 columns, right? So r has to be less than or equal to n plus 1 columns, right? The number of pivot columns has to be less or equal to the total number of columns. In this theorem, we're assuming that the system is consistent, so the last column is not a pivot column. That was our last theorem. So r has to be less than or equal to n. Now, of course, if r is equal to n, then there are n minus r equal to 0 free variables. This gives us a unique solution. But if r is less than n, strictly less than, then yes, there are free variables, right? There are n minus r greater than 0 free variables. And, and we can see in that case that there are infinitely many solutions. OK, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about these free variables. Um, we've seen that um, a consistent system has n minus r free variables. Um, the solution set can always be described with n minus r free variables. That's the take home message of this theorem. This is just our last theorem sort of rewritten, so I won't, I won't go through the proof on this one. Um, as an example, let's go ahead and look at, um, again, the system that corresponds to archetype A. In this system of equations, we know there are three equations and three unknowns n equals three variables. We see that r equals two pivots, giving us one free variable. This tells us there are infinitely many solutions. On the other hand, the linear system associated with archetype B is a little bit different. In this case, n equals three variables, r equals three pivots, and minus r equals zero free variables. So the set of solutions is unique in this case. Here's another example, um, archetype a, um, h. We can see that in this case, the reduced row echelon form has a pivot column in the n plus first column. OK, we know that, that the system is inconsistent, right? So this theorem on identifying free variables for consistent systems doesn't even apply to this example. OK, two variables. The third column on the augmented matrix in the reduced row echelon form is a pivot. The system is inconsistent. Um, similarly, for this system of equations, where we have three equations and four unknowns, right? The, here, similarly, the, the fifth column in the augmented matrix is a pivot. No solution here either. So this leads us to a, a theorem that, um, that we sort of alluded to even as early as the, as the first day of, of, of class, this idea that um, a system of linear equations either has no solution, unique solution, or infinitely many solutions. So, so the proof here is, is pretty straightforward, and it sort of depends on, on what's called a decision tree. So we'll give the proof first, and then we'll talk about the decision tree. Um, by definition, a system is consistent or it's not. right? So if it's inconsistent, we know it has no solution. On the other hand, if a system is consistent, then the number of variables minus the number of pivots may be zero. If that number is zero, there are no free variables. So we see that the, the set of solutions is unique. On the other hand, if that number of, uh, of free variables m minus r is greater than zero, then there are infinitely many solutions. OK, and again, we can start with theorem RCLS which tells us if column m plus 1 is a pivot, then our system is inconsistent, right? So no solution. On the other hand, if column m plus 1 is not a pivot, we know that our system is consistent. And in the case where we have 
n equals r, the number of pivots is the number of variables, then we have a unique solution. Of course, if n is less than r, then there are infinitely many solutions. And I think I misspoke there, that's if, if n is greater than r. Okay, so again, if the number of pivots is equal to the number of columns, we have a unique solution. If there are fewer pivots than columns, then there are free variables, and, and that's a case of infinitely many solutions. Uh, one final theorem to close. If we have a consistent system of m equations and n variables, and n is greater than m, our system always has infinitely many solutions. This is a, a, a pretty, a pretty uh, clever proof here. If our system is consistent, there's always a solution. We know that r is the number of pivot columns. It's also the number of non-zero rows, right? So the number of non-zero rows has to be less than or equal to the total number of rows. Of course, if there are more rows than variables, m greater than n. Sorry, I've got that backward. Hold on. If the number of variables is greater than the number of equations, n greater than m, then n has to be greater than r. So n minus r is greater than zero. So we have free variables. And of course, if we have free variables, then we have infinitely many solutions. Okay, folks, that's a lot on types of sets of solutions, but the take home message here is that the reduced row echelon form of uh, the augmented matrix tells us first whether a system is consistent, that is whether it has a solution. And then it also tells us whether um, a consistent system has a unique or infinitely many solutions. All right, folks, thanks for your attention. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.